Yeah, no, uh, week to week. You know, I think uh, in order to even get to, you know, we're talking about the playoff picture and all that, you got to um, find a way to beat a really good Browns team at home. Um, I mean, they've been playing really great ball. Um, they've beaten a lot of really good teams in our league. And, um, I mean, we have a challenge set out for us. They run the ball really well. And um, they have a lot of good uh, um, athletes on the on the uh, offensive side of the ball that um, could cause us trouble on defense. So we got to do a good job this week, um, you know, with the run game, obviously, and eliminating the explosives for them in the pass game and um, just the one and no mentality, you know, every week. Justin, a few weeks ago, you stood right there and gave an impassioned defense of Green Jackson. Mm -hmm. Did he let his teammates down? No, not even close. I, uh, I was going to save it for the end this time, but. I think you, you, when you look at, uh, first of all, I made a, uh, I made a tweet um, or an X, I don't know what you call it, but um, I made a, I made a post on X, uh, you know, and I wasn't trying to single out the, the Bills player. I, I don't even know, um, you know, his name, but I was just trying to prove that, like, there's no consistency in what's being asked of us as, as defensive players, and it's costing guys uh in some in some aspects you know you're talking about kareem like a little bit of his reputation i mean the fact that he's going to miss the next four games in a crucial part of our season is unbelievable and for a play that if that if that's routinely going to be called then why was it not called on that one play sure they threw the flag but we're going to throw the flag against the bills and not find them and we're going to not throw the flag against kareem but find them and then also give another four game suspension like there there's no and then I, I quoted, I literally copy and pasted the quote from Kareem's suspension, Rule 12, Section 10, whatever it was. It says, keep your head off the, you know, head or neck, shoulder area of a, this is literally by definition what that player did in Buffalo to Cortland. By definition, head down, hit the, the base of the bottom of the base of his face mask. You saw Court's head pop back a little bit. And... The flag was thrown, but there was no discipline afterwards. And then all we get told is stay off the head or neck area. And I'm not attacking like the NFL. I'm not attacking the officiating. I'm not trying to sit up here and, you know, that, that's not the intent. The intent is if, we're, if you're actually trying to help us get better, what are the coaching points? How are we going to get better? What are, the, what are the ways that you're going to help us to apply that? Because if we're just going to slap fines on guys and, and slap suspensions, and then when they come back four games later and nothing's changed, that's not our fault. We're trying our best to adapt to the rules while we're in the game, and it's just hard to unlearn something you've done for 14, 13 years in the, in the league, specifically talking about Kareem. And so, I mean, we got guys that have banners hanging up here. We have guys that have banners hanging up in the Hall of Fame that have played tremendous ball in this league, and we praise them every single year now, during the Super Bowl you know, we have the, the, the top 100 of all time, and there's guys that are literally praised for those types of hits in our game. And I, I just, it hurts my heart, man, because anything that I am as a player, I said this last time, is because of Kareem. And that's another thing I'm upset about is because we preach that um, players' mental health is important. And uh, we preach that, that how important that is to us. But then we're telling a guy who's been nothing but great to this organization since he's been here and has helped so many people, hey, stay away. Like, not only are you suspended, but you can't help the young guys. You know, you can't help prep a, um, a younger guy coming up that might have to get extra snaps because now you're down. Um, you can't be around the facility. I mean, thank God Kareem has a family and people that can love on him because if this was a younger guy, you're basically sending him back home, and who knows what trouble he could get into. And then we're saying we're helping him, though. That, to me, makes absolutely no sense. And um, I'm, I could keep going on a, on a tangent. I want to I be, like every other time I'm up here, um, I want to be respectful to um, the Cleveland Browns and, and, and the fact that we're getting ready to go play a tough AFC opponent um, at home. Um, so that, that, those are just my, my frustrating thoughts on it. And... Uh, like I said, I just consistency and clarity is, is really all we're asking for. Just one follow up. Do you, do you think that consistency and clarity is something that the players' association should pursue over the last season? Do you think they have that? It's man, I, I, in my opinion, it's mandatory that they pursue that.
difficult to have to play the position not to for anyone on defense when they're telling you you have to do this this way without really telling you how to do that. Yeah, it's 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 frustrating. Um, it's just like anything in in you know in in life, I guess, for that matter. But in terms of football, like you know, if I'm told to get my job done, and I ask how to get my job done, and the response is just get it done. Um, <laughs> I, okay, I'll try my best, but yeah. So the third week in a row, you see a, a guy you played a lot of snaps with, a lot of games with, and Shelby Harris. So how's it going to be this week? Yeah, man, it's going to be so good to see him. Similar to similar to Vaughn, right? Like, um, it's going to be great to see him. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to talk to him um, pregame, but catch up with him a little postgame and. Um, another guy that gotten to know him over the years, got to know his family. I love Shelby uh, so much, man. He's been a great friend, a great teammate. Um, you know, and you know, with that being said, I hope he doesn't have as uh, great a game against us as as he's had, um, you know, over there at the Browns, and then obviously when he was playing here. So, uh, but nothing but respect to him, man. I have all love for him, and um, so glad to see that um, you know he's finding some success over there too. Yeah. Uh, so give us a sense for where your confidence lies in this team to be ready to play big games this time of the year. Yeah, confidence is, uh, is at an all-time high. And I think, you know, for the guys in the locker room, it should be. Um, there's no reason you shouldn't go into any stadium, especially one at home, and uh, think you can't win this football game. And um, for us, man, it's just I was sharing it, I think, after, the, uh, after we just got done playing Minnesota um, post-game, like, you got to be able to handle the lows and the highs almost the same. And so, you know, starting the season the way that we did, um, you got to be level headed, don't overreact, trust in the plan, fix the things that you can control. And then when you're winning, you can't overreact, overhype, um, control the things that you can control and put your head down and just keep working because just because you won, you know, a couple games doesn't mean anything um, at this point. And you got to be able to prove it week in and week out. But also in the same regard, you should have confidence with that too. And there should be some momentum with that. Um, but it's only, like I said, every week, man, when, when, when that Tuesday or Wednesday hits, you, you know, you crumple up last week, you toss it over your shoulder because it doesn't matter anymore. And so that's the mentality for us every week. Yeah, yeah. JL's, JL's been great, man. I think, uh, I think the thing that's impressed me the most with him, I sit next to him in our meeting room, and his attention to detail when, you know, writing notes, asking questions from week one all the way up until today has been um, just really awesome to watch. He's the student of a game, um, is asking questions, even when he knows he's going to be active early on in the week. And that's, that's props to him. You know, Kareem and I told him, earlier on um, in the season and then PJ could attest to this and and Delarian and you know other guys that have played and have played some meaningful snaps like this is a league where you're you know it could be down two three weeks and then all of a sudden you have to start and when you go out there and you start man like that's your spot not to you know what I'm saying like you got to earn that and you want to earn it and solidify that and that's just how the league works you know and we want to make sure that you're you're prepped for that spot um, and uh, he's just been doing a great job with that. So he understands that you know his time could be called, and who knows? I think one of the cool things about it too is uh, J Mac, right? Like he's playing meaningful ball um, now for us, playing at a really high level. Um, I mean, his first game, he was active last year against the Chargers, and and uh, he had a really good game. And that kind of you know maybe that told him I could do this. And he coming out this year, and he's playing his tail off. And so there's always little stories all around the league of things like that. And um, JL's time will come. Awesome. Thanks, guys.